Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Yesterday, we started at the end trying to describe what we are supposed to do today is to look at problems which are actually non-convex in nature, but uh, they can be tackled by using the proper properties of convex functions. Because if you observe this fact that for example, this um, minimization of the difference of two convex function over say x, x element of Rn. then you will have observed that here we have two convex functions. So, you can use some properties about convexity and we are also talking about the maximization of two maximization of a convex function which we have showed to be actually a non convex problem. So, uh, if you look at so we have two basically two problems minimization of f x minus g x for the time being let it be over x element of r n and the maximization of f x x element of c. In the previous problem, in the problem I would call uh, maybe I should say two, two things. Let me call this as p 1, this is, this is what we are going to discuss in the beginning and this let me call as p 2, because we will discuss this the next. Because observe that from p 1 can follow from p 2, because in p 1 if f is 0 throughout, then it is nothing but maximization minimization of a concave function, because it is minus g x. So, it is maximization of a convex function. So, now let us uh, go to this problem of maximization of a convex function. We have shown yesterday by an example very simple drawing that a local minima local maxima of a convex function which is which is minus 1 in this case I will just redraw it make it look nicer. So, if it is minus which was minus 1 in this case is not the global maximum which is the plus which is plus 1 in the case when I am restricting c over minus 1 and plus 1. So, this is something which is very important to realize and then See, since even problem p 1 can be posed as a problem p 2 by writing this as mean of minus of f x and then writing phi x minus f x where phi x is 0. So, these two problems are very strongly related or they are the interchangeable in some sense. Now, how would we do anything about them? Okay, let us maybe you are tempted to think about p 2 first, because we have already thought about minimization. So, just taking again a little bit of detour and listening to the dictates of maybe your heart and my heart too, I would like to just show how do I, do I find the optimality condition for this problem. Now, let us be very clear that the optimality condition that I find for this problem is essentially um, necessary condition and not a sufficient one, because this is a non convex problem. So, you cannot expect uh, optimality condition to be both necessary and sufficient. So, let x bar be a mean of p 2. Let me call it local mean that is better be a local mean of p 2. This implies that for v element of R n there exists lambda greater than 0 sufficiently small such that f of x plus x bar plus lambda v minus g of x bar plus lambda v is greater than equal to f of x bar 
minus g of x bar. This would immediately bring to the fore the following fact. Now, dividing my lambda on both sides because lambda is sufficiently small and taking the limit as lambda tends to 0. Now, both these limits exist, because these are convex functions. So, see we have now transferred our difficulty of non convexity to the efficiency of convexity, here would immediately imply and this would be true for all v. Because this v was chosen to be arbitrary, so since v was arbitrary. Now, if you look at this kind of thing, this is also an optimality condition, but in the minimality form. But this would, but you see from here, you cannot go back to this, you cannot show that x bar is a local minimum, impossible. Now, what would what would this imply? Can I transfer it into a sub differential condition? Of course, for any xi element of del g x bar, it would imply that g dash x bar v is greater than or equal to xi v for all v element of R n. So, this would imply that xi is because of this condition xi is also element of del of f of x bar, which simply implies that del g of x bar is actually a subset of del f of x bar. So, this is the sub differential based optimality condition for the problem P 2. So, resisting for the temptations we will just look into this slightly uh, you know more bothersome looking problem a maximization one. Maybe our habit has become so over this uh, uh, 38 of 35, 37 or 38 lectures that we are uh, seeing that we are always talking about minimization and there is nothing like about maximization and so things are very different. Now, how do we write down an optimality condition for a mini maxima? Now, Suppose x bar is a global maximum, is a global maximum for P, it is a global maximum for P 1. Then for all x in C, f of x is bigger than f of x bar and that would imply that f of x minus f of x bar is bigger than z. sorry I am making a mistake it is maximum. So, it will be opposite. So, it will imply that f of x minus f of x bar is negative. So, now again applying the definition of the subgradient, for all x element of C and all xi element of the normal cone to C at x bar. This would simply imply that del of f x bar is n c x bar is in a subset of 
the normal cone to C at x bar. So, this is the condition for x bar to be a necessary condition for x bar to be a global maximum of a convex function. Note that this is a necessary condition and not sufficient. I will show you an example which will tell you that uh, this example is from a paper of mine which was published in 19 uh, sorry in 2006 which dealt with maximize this problem of maximization for convex and non convex problems. So, and, uh, and the study of their optimality conditions. So, if you look at uh, here uh, if you look at this thing now consider this problem max of this which is a convex fu function I want to maximize this x is in R and my problem now is to max this f x or x element of minus 1 0 which is my c. So, I am showing that I will show a point where this condition would be satisfied, but that point would not be a global maximizer. So, let x bar equal to 0. So, n c 0 is a set of all x such that x is greater than equal to 0. You figure it out how figure out. You have to figure out how I have figured done this. I will leave it to you, but it is very simple because it is on the real line it is very simple to see you just have to apply that notion of projection. Now, if you calculate the sub differential at 0, the sub differential at 0 is on one side it is x square, other side it is x. So, it is 0 1. this also I leave it out to figure out. I do not do this and I put both of these together as a homework. And if you look at this then it is clear that del f of 0 But if you look at the graph of this function, this is my y equal to x and here between the positive part and then it goes till 1 and goes up x square. So, the graph of the function is not really like this, the graph of the function looks here and then it goes up again. So, here if you look at this point x equal to 0 is a local is a global minimizer here x equal to 0 this is the graph graph and x equal to 0 over the set 0 minus 1 sorry minus 1 0 and x take x equal to 0 and take x equal to minus 1. So, on this particular set it is clear that 0 is the global minimizer of the function. So, you can actually over the whole r it is a global minimizer. So, you can really see that this condition is satisfied, but x equal to 0 is a global minimizer. So, this example appeared in I will just uh, take a second to tell you the example appeared in a paper by myself which says which to with the title optimality condition
conditions for maximizing local ellipses functions. is published in a journal optimization in uh, volume 54 pages 377 to 389 in 2005 sorry not 2006 2005 okay so for getting this, uh, let us look at some result due to Strekalovsky, which says the following. Okay, let us tell you something which is more much more interesting. So we will uh, now uh, say our, we will now show a result or mention a result by Rockefeller. It's from the book Convex Analysis by Rockefeller. There is a chapter on maximization of convex functions. So, the result says the following. That a convex function will never attain its minimum local or global whatever it is relative to the set C which is a closed convex set, it will never attain its local or global minimum in the interior, it will be always in the boundary, if not that function will become constant. So, here is the major result, so I will write it as theorem 1. Consider a function f from r into r and a convex set C subset of R n that is polyhedral, sorry, not I set closed set, it should be polyhedral. So, this is a reason the for example, here in the first example, this set minus 1 to plus 1 is a polyhedral set. And that is why for linear programming problem you always have the solutions on the boundary, but the linear function is both convex and concave, convex set which is polyhedral, which is polyhedral. Suppose that there or no half lines in C on which F is unbounded below. This is a very, very important result. Then F attains its supremum over C. So, it is a condition under which it is the supremum is achieved. So, basically the you will the you, you can find the point of maxima of a convex function on a polyhedral set if this condition holds. Another result which is also from Rockefeller is the following these are very very fundamental results about maximization of convex functions is that if you have a convex function on a convex set and if if attains a point in the interior then the f function must be constant. So, let f be from r n to r n a convex function and c be a convex set such that interior of c or int of c is not equal to 5. If f attains 
its if attains its supremum or the maximum value whichever you want to call it relative to C at some point it could be a local minimum also in the interior of C then f is constant. Basically you cannot have a scenario like this, suppose you have a set like this and you have a convex function you are minimizing and you say okay, let the convex function is having uh, something having a local maxima here and then of course, it the function has to come down something like this and a global maxima here. See even if it, it cannot have a local minima, once it has a local maxima you see just for a function from R to R, if the function has to rise on one side drop on another side, once you do that you lose the convexity of the epigraph and hence the function would not remain to be convex. So, if the function is convex it cannot attain its supremum relative to C in the interior of C if the C has an interior. So, that is a very very important conclusion and this conclusion should be always kept in mind. Now, of course, you can ask that can you improve this condition in some way, so that uh, our uh, problem our um, condition becomes both necessary and sufficient that is can you guarantee a necessary and sufficient condition for local minima. We uh, can do something, but there are many many research steps here, but we are not going to go through any of these research steps, but what we are going to do is we are going to try to mention the major result that is essentially due to Hiria Turuti and Ledaev and, uh, and a different proof was provided uh, by myself in that paper which I had mentioned when a different approach was taken and it was done for certain different class of functions not exactly convex, but some uh, slightly generalized version of a convex function. So, let me mention this result due to Hiria, Turuti and Ledaev. So, I will also this is a paper which they published long back in. So, both of them are leading optimizers and those who really love mathematics and want to become convex analysts or mathematical optimizers should read papers by Hiria, Turuti and his books. So, again give me a second, so that I will let you know exactly what is the details of the paper. So, the, this paper the title is a note on the characterization on the characterization of a global maximum. maxima of a you do not have to bother much this is only for people who want to go and read these papers. See when a course like this which is uh, quite important for application, but also mathematically very interesting is done at the end we should give in some research flavors it is not just some course material done. So, that you pass exams there should be some courses in the this NPTEL category which would also give you some sort of research flavors. I think most courses would give you some sort of research flavor. So, that is very important. So, at the end of this course we are trying to give you some research research flavor and that is why you have started mentioning papers here rather than just giving names of books. Convex function over a convex set. Now, this paper was published in journal of convex analysis in volume 3. So, every journal has a volume and every volume has some numbers and then papers are published in each of these numbers on a particular volume. 
So, I am not writing the numbers, uh, the part, uh, but just the volume, uh, because that is the traditional way to write. So, pages 55 to 61 and it was published in 1996. So, my paper was published almost 10 years later, but dealt with slightly different things. So, the problem the theorem is as follows. Of course, I will try to show you how to prove this result and that could be an interesting way to end our discussion for today. So, consider a convex function f from R n to R. and a closed convex function and a closed convex set sorry convex set let x bar be such this is what I have that the infimum there is an let x bar be such that it is strictly bigger than the infimum. Of course, if I am trying to uh, pose it as a candidate of max, maximum as a maximum the guy where the maximum is achieved then this should at least be true right. Then x bar element of C is a maximizer. I am now talking about a global maximizer, because I want to get a global maximization condition that is very very important, because at the end I want a global maximizer. I will go back and again put a homework on you, I am giving too many homeworks. So, if I have a if I had a if x bar was a local maxima, can you devise an optimality condition sorry but try it out it will be fun. Those who do not want to listen to all these things as I am talking about flavors of research and you feel that you have got some idea of certain things which you can apply in your work, you may just hang around and see something and it may not even bother to have a bother to concentrate much, but it is not harmful to have a look at things. C is a maximizer is a global maximum. of f over c, if and only if, so it is now it is an Hessian and sufficient condition del of f x. Now, the condition would look quite tough, but there is no other way it seems for all x element of c satisfying if x bar is the only point which satisfies this then also this will be true. So, what it says if there is only one x for which f x equal to f x bar and there is no other x other than x bar. Then also if we have del f x bar element subset of n x n c x bar then also f x bar would be strictly greater than f x bar would be true. Then, then if this condition is satisfied and x bar is the only point for which this is holding true and there is no other x for in c for which f x is equal to f x bar then also we will get x bar as a global maximizer. If you look at look back you will try to see this condition that x equal to 0 does not satisfy this basic result I mean sorry this basic condition required. So, this this is important this condition is fundamental. So, 
So, now maybe I will start doing the way I had proved it proved it. So, I will go through the proof step by step in mathematical courses it is quite instructional to go through the proofs. So, with the with this proof I will be possibly ending today's uh, talk and come to max the minimization of DC functions tomorrow. Now, you have observed in a statement that this question uh, statement says it is if and only if. So, it is necessary and sufficient. So, if x bar is a global minimizer of course, this condition is obviously true right. Unless the function is constant this is obviously true. Then what we have already proved that del of f x bar is subset of n c x bar. So, if x f x is equal to f x bar, then for all all such x we will have of course, x is in c x is in c. See f x is equal to f x bar does not mean that uh, f x is equal to f x bar does not mean that x is equal to x bar. So, what we have said that now if f x is equal to f x bar. So, basically if I have f y minus f x bar. So, now x bar is a global minimizer. So, this is what I have to show. So, what I will do is that ok if so f i minus f x bar must be less than equal to 0 for all y element of c. So, f i is less than equal to f x I have replaced f, f x bar with f x what whenever x is equal to f x bar this is true. Then again repeat the same sort of argument I would have had with f x bar and then you get this simple uh, proof. This is I could have left it as homework, but ok. So, now we have to look at the converse part. So, again we will use one of the biggest weapons of proving things in mathematics which is called proof by contradiction. So, which uh, in this case we will assume that let assume on the contrary that x bar is not a global maximizer. F on C, which means there exists x hat element of C such that f of x hat is strictly bigger than f x. Now, sorry f of x bar consider the following level set s level set. So, I you can also write it as level f x bar whatever, but I am just writing in this simple form this is usually many research papers they would use this sort of symbol rather than the lev of something. So, the level set is a set of all x element of c here because we are only restricted to us over c. So, one thing is clear that x hat is not an element of s x bar since f is convex s x bar is a convex set. I am sure you remember this very very important statement, but a statement which you have mentioned long back in the very beginning of the course. If you are not sure convince yourself. So, now once this is done let us see how much at what distance is 
x hat from this level set right. See these are all the values of f x. So, why I am doing this that is the whole question. So, I know that so these are all the values of x which are below f x bar. Now, I really want to find the distance of x hat from x bar. So, the maximizer is definitely outside s x bar x hat could be also the maximizer it, it may not be the maximizer something I do not know. So, it is very important that it is important for us to know that okay, uh, of course, the minimizer of the function is lying here and so x hat could be the maximizer I have no idea, but, uh, but x hat actually breaks this because x bar we have assumed not to be a maximizer. So, it is very important for us to know an estimate of how far is x hat from x bar is x hat is also in c is the distance 0. Here of course, uh, sorry here we have shown that x hat is in c, but x hat is not in s x bar. So, what is the distance that is very important means how far is this point x, x bar from a x from the actual minimizer. So, we are trying to estimate that distance. So, in doing so we are trying to estimate we are trying to solve this projection problem which you know that I am trying to find the distance of the set the level set sub subject to f x is less than equal to f x bar x bar element of c. So, I am trying to solve this convex optimization problem and this is a strongly convex problem over a closed convex set which has a unique solution. So, this problem this projection problem projection problem. So, basically I am trying to see what is the distance between x set and s x bar the level set. So, of course, I have if f x the infimum has to be in s x bar and the infimum is of course, strictly the, um, the if the infimum is achieved the, the minimizer has to be in s x bar and that is strictly less than f x bar. So, it is very important to know at what distance the real minimizer might maximizer might be that is what we are going to show. So, we will get into some contradiction when we try to estimate this distance when we estimate this distance we will show that some contradiction will arise. So, there cannot be a point outside s x x hat. So, if if there is x hat is really outside c we will get a proper estimation of the distance between x hat and c and we will reach no con no contradiction. If I reach a contradiction well I am trying to see how far is x hat from this particular level set that is how far the minimizer might be from actual my x bar. If I reach a contradiction there then my basic assumption that x bar is not a maximizer is true. So, I have see the idea is like this I have assumed that x bar is a maximizer and now I am trying to I found a point x hat there must be a point x hat which would be strictly bigger than f x bar. Now, I am looking at all the values of x such that f x is less than f x, x, f x bar. Now, x hat is outside it I am trying so x hat the minimizer might, might be somewhere so outside s x bar. So, I am trying to at least estimate the distance between x bar and x mean the set s x bar and x hat. If I am unable to make if I make the estimate and run into a contradiction means x hat could not be outside c x hat has to be in c and hence proving that x bar is a maximizer. So, let us try to do this and see if we can run into any contradiction. Now, again you might ask me how do I start doing this. So, let us assume we will go by using our standard Fritz-John optimality condition. To do this we will apply first the Fritz-John conditions. You see we have we are not aware whether there is any I do not know whether Slater condition is holding here. Slater condition holds and I can directly apply if the Slater condition does not hold then I do not know. So, there exists a minimizer of this problem say x tilde is a minimizer of the projection problem.
then what would happen is that I will apply the fridge on condition or the John conditions whatever you want to say. By fridge John conditions there would exist lambda naught lambda 1 not equal to 0, lambda not greater than 0, lambda 1 greater than 0 such that 0 is element of lambda naught x tilde minus x hat plus lambda del f lambda 1 del f x tilde plus n c x tilde. See the problem is that I cannot immediately talk about Karush Kuntagar condition because I do not know whether the Slater condition holds here. If I know that there is Slater condition holds here then it is direct, but here I do not know whether, whether Slater condition holds and let us see what we can do further. Now, once we do this and also it would this is the first condition and the second condition is the complementary slackness condition which will say that lambda 1 f x tilde minus f x bar is equal to 0. Assume that lambda naught is equal to 0, let this would imply that lambda 1 must be strictly bigger than 0. Thus, we have from this expression the number 2 expression from 2 f x tilde must be equal to f x bar absolutely it, it has to be like that because the lambda is strictly bigger than 0 this cannot be strictly less than 0 right. Then it will be strictly less than 0 and from 1 we will simply have the condition lambda 1 del f x tilde plus n c x tilde 0 belonging to this. So, this would imply because lambda 1 is positive I can divide by lambda 1 on both sides and the lambda 1 would be absorbed in the normal cone because it is a cone. So, 0 would belong to del f x tilde plus n c x tilde. So, this is nothing but a necessary and sufficient condition for a point to be a minimizer of the convex function over c. So, x bar is the point. So, you see how beautifully how interestingly we have brought in what we have learnt about convex minimization in the study of convex maximization. So, thus x bar x bar is a minimizer of f over c that is f x bar is inf of f x. But this implies that by our first condition in the result by this condition, this condition will immediately imply the first condition that f x tilde is strictly less than f x bar which is a contradiction. So, this would imply a contradiction. Thus, lambda naught is strictly greater than 0. Now, okay, what would happen if lambda 1 is equal to 0? Right. Let us now assume lambda 1 is equal to 0. So, because lambda naught is a lambda naught is strictly greater than 0, since lambda naught is strictly greater than 0 this would imply that 0 would become would be x would be contained in this set. This would imply that x hat minus x tilde is element of n c x tilde which would imply that x hat minus x tilde x hat minus x tilde x hat minus x tilde. So, this would immediately imply that x hat is equal to x tilde 
which is a contradiction which is a contradiction because this is in S x bar sorry this is not in S x bar and this thing is in S x bar. So, there is a contradiction. So, this would imply is for us that lambda 1 is also strictly bigger than 0 that is great. So, what happens? So, there exists a xi element of del f x tilde and eta element of n c x tilde by your first optimality condition it would imply that 0 must be equal to lambda naught x tilde minus x sat plus lambda 1 xi plus eta. Now, what we have said is that since f x tilde is equal to f x bar that is what we have got because lambda 1 is now strictly bigger than 0. So, it has to be since as so this is not so as if I wanted to show lambda 1 strictly greater than 0 because this is what I wanted to show. Now, once I have this this would imply that del of f x tilde is subset of n c x tilde. So, this xi that you have is also lying in n c x tilde. So, it would imply that minus lambda 1 does not matter lambda 1 into xi x sat minus x tilde would be greater than equal to 0. So, this would be anyway less than equal to 0. So, lambda 1 is positive. So, you take the minus it will be strictly greater than 0. Okay. Now, again it is simple to see that if I multiply now what, what I did was basically I, I took lambda naught xi on this side and now if I multiply on both sides so what I did was lambda 1 xi x at minus x tilde. Actually what I did was I took minus lambda hat xi I wrote this to be x tilde minus x hat plus eta. Okay. Now, I am multiplying x hat minus x tilde. So, what I did was I did multiply this with x hat minus x tilde and when I multiplied this with lambda naught it became x tilde minus x hat with x hat minus x tilde plus eta times x hat minus x tilde. Now, this is less than equal to 0 this thing okay, I have observed that this part is strictly bigger than 0 and now lambda naught into what you would have is this x tilde minus x hat they cannot be equal this whole square plus eta into x hat tilde minus this. So, this is less than equal to 0 because eta is in the normal cone and this is strictly less than 0 this is strictly bigger than 0 lambda is strictly positive. So, this is strictly less than 0 so, this whole thing is strictly less than 0. So, this part is strictly greater than 0 and this part becomes strictly less than 0 that that runs into a construct runs into a contradiction. So, whatever I have assumed in the beginning that x bar is not a maximizer is wrong and x bar is a global maximizer of the problem and hence we end our discussion tomorrow and we will go today and we go tomorrow to the discussion of minimization of our DC function over a set C or over the whole R and whatever is simple for us. Thank you and hoping that you would look back into the thing tomorrow.